Today what we're going over are 10 reasons why this outdoor air conditioning system won't turn on. And some of the problems have to do with the power supply, some with the low voltage, and some with the electrical components within this compartment. I'm going to be going over the troubleshooting of each of these scenarios coming up. So we're at the outdoor unit and if we know that the indoor thermostat is calling for AC to turn on and the indoor blower motor is running, we need to test for power at this outdoor unit. So we're going to test at the inlet of the contactor and you see that we read zero volts. So that means we have no main electrical power to the outdoor unit. However, we do have our 24 volts from the indoor unit telling the outdoor unit to turn on and you see that the contactor is sucked in. So now we need to see why we don't have our main electrical power. So we're going to go over to the outdoor electrical disconnect to investigate why. At the disconnect, this one happens to be a fuse disconnect. So you see the fuse is right here. We're gonna measure for power at the terminals. And so you don't know which pair has the power. So we're gonna measure there, from there to there. You see we have 120. From here to here we have 120. So from here to here we have 240 volts. So we know we have power in. However, we know that we don't have power at the outdoor unit, so that means we need to check these fuses here. So we're gonna switch this and read our resistance value. And that fuse is good. So we read 0, 0.0 ohms right there. And on this one, you see we're just reading mega ohms. So that fuse is bad. So that's our problem right here, this fuse. So now you need to match the new fuse to the max current of the outdoor unit. And then also you really wanna check for an amp draw on that outdoor unit to determine if there's a reason why that fuse blew, if it was due to overcurrent, or maybe it was due to something like lightning or something like that. Problem number two is if you have a bad power supply problem. So if you go to measure for voltage at the outdoor disconnect and you have zero volts, you need to go to the indoor breaker box and see if that breaker is in the off position. And you also need to see if it just keeps tripping. And so if the outdoor unit is uh, drawing a much lower current than what the indoor breaker is rated for and it keeps tripping, then you have a bad breaker. But in that case, you need to call an electrician and have them assess the situation and replace that breaker. Problem number three is a bad capacitor. So if we have 240 volts at the contactor inlet, as well as 240 volts at the outlet, you can usually hear the compressor or the outdoor fan motor trying to turn on, but both are not turning on. It's usually the capacitor that's at fault. So we're going to go ahead and turn the power off now. So now the power's off, and any time that you see a bulge at the top or oil coming down, you can visually tell that that capacitor is bad, but sometimes it will look fine and it's bad internally. You want to make sure to replace this with the same microfarad ratings. So this one is a 50 microfarad for the compressor, 7.5 for the fan, and you need to replace it with the same or higher voltage rating. If you want to learn more about capacitors, check out the videos down in the description section below. Problem number four is when you have a problem with the contacts on the contactor. And so you see that we are measuring 24 volts on the side of the contactor. You can hear it chattering and we'll measure for power at the inlet of the contactor. We have 240 volts and we should have 240 volts over here, but we do not. In this case, it's due to a spider web or a spider egg right here that you can see. Sometimes it's ants and sometimes it's when the contact is pitted, such as in this case right here. You can see the burn marks. They get so burnt that they have no continuity across them, even though the contacts look like they're closed. And so in this case, you have to replace that bad contactor. So make sure to pull that outdoor electrical disconnect and verify the powers off before replacing that contactor. Problem number five is a bad contactor coil. So you can see that this one got some water damage back here. So that coil is bad. So we're going to measure and see we do have 27 volts onto the coil, but it's not sucking this contactor down. I also want to show you that we have 240 volts here and we have no voltage here. So now we're going to turn the power off and we're going to test the coil for resistance. First, we want to verify that there's no power present, so that's good. We're going to change this to our resistance reading. And we'll go ahead and pull these off. And we'll check between these two tabs that connect to the coil. You see that we're measuring OL, so we're in mega ohms, so this coil is burnt apart. And here's a contactor with a good coil, and we'll read the resistance value here. And you see that we're reading 10.7 ohms, and this is a 30 FLA two-pole contactor. 
So just make sure with the power off to go ahead and replace that contactor because of the bad coil. Problem number six is that you have a low pressure switch that has electrically opened. And that's due to low refrigerant pressure due to a refrigerant leak. So even though you have 24 volts from your indoor unit present on your thermostat wires, you won't have 24 volts on your contactor because the wires go through your pressure switches and those are located in the outdoor unit. So you won't see this in the electrical cabinet as obvious as it is right here, but you're gonna need to search for a refrigerant leak. Problem number seven is a bad thermostat wire connection from the indoor unit to the outdoor unit contactor. In this case, these wires are just exposed to the elements and you have a wire knot that just gets water in it and it's all rusted. So you're not getting 24 volts to the contactor. So you may have this type of issue. You may have maybe a weed whacker has hit your wires or maybe not an obvious problem, such as like maybe a mouse has chewed your wires. So in that case, you're gonna have to run a brand new thermostat wire, or if you do have the possibility of using this unused wire, this extra wire, you can utilize that instead of one of these two wires. The next three problems are when you notice that the indoor blower motor is not turning on. And so you need to focus your troubleshooting attention at the indoor unit. Problem number eight is when you fool yourself into thinking that the power is on at the thermostat just based on seeing the display lit. However, some thermostats are only powered by batteries and not by the thermostat wires. You could have the power to the furnace in the off position or the door switches in the off position or the power in the breaker box is turned off. Problem number nine is a condensate emergency safety switch cutting off power to your thermostat. So in this case, you see a condensate pump that has a safety switch and right on the control board, you have your power wire having to go through this safety switch. So if this is overflowing, it's gonna cut off power to the R that goes to the thermostat. So also in this case, you have this type of float switch in a pan and that is cutting off the Y. So in that case, what would happen is the blower motor would still continue to run, but the outdoor unit would not have any 24 volts at the contactor. Now you could also have a switch in your condensate tubing. If your condensate tubing is overflowing, then this switch could cut off power to the R or the Y as well. Problem number 10 is a bad thermostat wire or a bad low voltage fuse or a bad thermostat. In this case, we don't see the thermostat lit. However, we do have a status light on the LED, so I know the fuse is intact. And so in order to check for voltage, we check between R and C, and we should have 24 volts if there is power, which we do have. We see our thermostat is blank, so let's go ahead and measure for voltage in the thermostat. So we go from R to C, and you see that we only read 1.4 volts. So we know that we have a problem somewhere in this thermostat wire. If you wanna learn more about thermostat troubleshooting or finding a low voltage short, make sure to check out the videos down in the description section below. And if you're looking for thermostat wiring diagrams, make sure to check out our website over at ecservicetech.com. We have a bunch of free resources there, such as the wiring diagrams, the articles, the calculators, the podcast, and also our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. So we have that book, quick reference cards, a thousand question workbook, some PowerPoints for teachers. We've got a bunch of resources over there, so make sure you check them out. We also have our ebook available over at iTunes and Google Play, as well as our website. And we also have our HVAC educational resources over on Amazon. So make sure you check all those out. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.